On day one, I spun in as a crab on a beach. I only have two hearts. I gotta be careful. I looked around and saw my family crawling around me. Wow, you guys are huge. I was small, but I was also super fast at crawling and had sharp claws. Enough playing around, time to make tools. I crawled over to a tree and chopped it down using my sharp claws. Using the wood, I made a wooden pickaxe, sword, and ax. Haha! -ha! I'm already getting stronger! Just then, I felt my stomach rumbling. Ugh, I could go for some fish right about now. I hopped into the sea and saw thousands of fish and other creatures swimming around. It was amazing! I was getting really hungry, so I started chasing after a fish until I caught it! Take that, you silly fish! I was still hungry, so I crawled back on land and found some villagers on the beach. Using my claws, I pinched their toes. Wait, I can't eat you guys. They screamed in pain and dropped some bread. Mmm, tasty bread. I decided to crawl back to my family, but when I got home, there were drowned all over the place. So I helped my family kill each one of them. That'll teach you not to mess with us. I then went to sleep after an amazing first day. On day two, I walked around the beach, collecting stone and coal, which I used to craft upgraded stone tools and torches. I used the torches to light up my home and make it cozy. After that, I headed out to hunt more fish, to eat and share with my family. I was crawling around the sea when I ran into a giant squid. Oh no. I better get far away from here. That squid looks so strong. I swam away from there as fast as I could. When I finally got home, I saw a giant creature stomping around my home. Hey, shoo, get out of here. The giant stomped all over our garden. My family tried to fight back, but it was no use. They didn't even leave a scratch. He just grabbed them in a bucket. No! Don't you dare take my family. Just then, the creature turned to me and threw a potion. Before I knew it, I passed out. I woke up on day three in a restaurant kitchen. Ugh, where am I? I looked around and saw a sign that read, Today's special, fresh crab. Oh no, I'm gonna be someone's dinner. <laughs> it's not looking good for you, little whippersnapper. I need to escape. My family's in danger, and I need to save them. Well, good luck with that, kid. How's a tiny little squirt like you gonna last out there? Even then, nobody has ever made it out of here alive. You're wrong. There has to be a way. Well, shoot yourself. <laughs> there was no way I could get past those chefs. I needed a better plan. Maybe I can get past that filter over there. Hmm, or not. I know, I'll use my pickaxe to break out. But first, I should wait for all the chefs to leave. I crawled around the tank until I found a rock to hide behind and waited there until it got dark. I woke up on the night of day four through five and got to work. All right, let's do this. I took out my stone pickaxe and broke the glass. I'm ready to take on the world, or at least this kitchen. But just then, a nighttime security guard walked through the kitchen door. What the? What's going on? Uh-oh. I scurried across the kitchen floor, dodging pots and pans, but the guard blocked the way. My only choice was to act on my animal instincts and pinch the guard's toe. Yowch! You little- Sorry! I made it out and bucked it towards the sea. Just a little bit further. But just before I reached the water, a flock of seagulls appeared and started attacking me. Ouch! Get away from me, you pests! I had no choice but to fight back. They were fierce, but I couldn't let them win. I managed to take out one seagull after another. I was able to kill them all and finally head back into the ocean. I did it! I can't believe I survived. With my family gone and my home destroyed, I knew I would have to take matters into my own hands. I swam out looking for resources and found a massive coral reef, which looked amazing. I decided to set up camp there. I started working on a base, building walls and a roof to protect me. I went to bed feeling sad and alone, knowing that my parents were in danger. I'm gonna get revenge on that giant. One day, I'll get strong enough to kill that monster. You'll see. I woke up hungry on day six through eight and decided to eat some fish. Suddenly, I grew and felt much stronger. Wow! Oh, only six hearts. I guess that's better. After that, I explored the seas. I found a massive ravine with an iron deposit. Cool, now I can craft iron tools. I then returned home and smelted the iron into ingots and made a whole set of iron armor and iron tools. Now I have two shells protecting me. I decided to explore some more around my base and found a shark lurking nearby. Oh no, 
What is a shark doing here? I felt brave and decided to attack it. But the shark was so fast and gave me the bleeding effect. I swam away as fast as I could, getting away with only half a heart to spare. I'll get my revenge on you, just you wait until I'm stronger. I continued exploring when suddenly I heard a sound. What was that? I looked around and saw a turtle stuck in a net. Don't worry, buddy. I'll save you. Using my claws, I cut the net, freeing the turtle. Wow, thanks so much, dude. No worries. We stick together in this underwater world. For sure, bro. I would totally have been toast there if it wasn't for you. That would not have been cool at all. Of course. If you want to, you can come live at my base. I have a cool hideout we could both live in. That's a rad offer, man. But I'm gonna have to pass. I've got some ways to catch. See you later, bro. I was sad about still being alone, but I knew I couldn't let that keep me down. I decided to go back home and fell right asleep after another successful day. I spent days 9 through 10 on an adventure. I made it to a sunken shipwreck and decided to explore it. What if there's treasure? I'm gonna be rich! I looted all the chests on the ship and found a treasure map. Whoa! Where could this lead to? I followed the map and found myself in a frozen ocean. I looked around and spotted the treasure. Excitedly, I swam to it. In it, I found prismarine crystals, iron, and a heart of the sea. Wow, no way! But just then, the shark from earlier swam up from behind me. Oh no, not you again. I can't let you keep bullying me around. I attacked the shark, and this time, I felt much stronger. But the shark was ruthless. It was still faster and stronger than me. I didn't have much health left. This was it. But just when I thought it was over, the troll from before ambushed the shark. I watched as it skillfully overpowered the shark. Wow, he's so cool. I snapped out of it and realized I should help the turtle. Together, we fought and defeated the shark. Thanks so much. I would have been dead if it wasn't for you. We stick together in this underwater world, right? Of course. So have you thought about my offer? Will you come live at my base? You know what? I'm in! We can make a pretty awesome team, dude! I'm Marlin, by the way. We swam back home with the treasure I found. And once there, I used the Heart of the Sea and some Nautilus shells to craft a conduit. Now we'll be able to see better and mine faster! On days 11 through 14, Marlin and I went out to gather resources. So, your parents were taken by a giant creature? That's horrible, man! I wonder what that creature was up to. I don't know, but I'm gonna find out. We made it onto dry land and went to gather sand and gravel. I'm gonna use these for a big project. With that, I started working on a giant statue. This would be a beacon of hope for all sea creatures. This is gonna be epic! I quickly ran out of materials and decided to go get some more. So I set off to get some, but on my way, I noticed a light coming from a deeper part of the ocean. I decided to investigate and followed it when I heard a shout. No! Stay away! Huh? Why? The deep sea is a dark place filled with dangerous creatures. Stay far away from it! There is nothing but death down there. I decided to listen to the old crab and headed back home. The statue will have to wait. On day 15, I was so tired that I slept through the whole day. In my sleep, I had a dream. Hello, little crab. We haven't met yet, but I heard you had the pleasure of meeting my friend, the diver. You! You're behind everything! I will find you and kill you! <laughs> I'd like to see you try. I will awaken the ocean beast and use its power to rule the entire ocean, and there's nothing you can do about it. I won't let you do that. Oh, but you will. You wouldn't want your precious parents to die, would you? Suddenly, I woke up from my dream. I felt angry. I could not let someone destroy my home. On days 16 through 19, I set out to find more friends. If I wanted to stop the mutant eel, I would need help. Marlin and I asked a bunch of sea creatures, but none of them seemed interested. It's like they don't believe me. Guys, we need to do something. No worries, man. They'll come around sooner or later. We continued looking for help above the sea and eventually found a wandering trader. Hello, huh? little crab. Would you like to buy some sea pickles? Uh, sure. How much are they? One pickle for huh? 10 emeralds. Take it or leave it. Yikes. Huh? I'm gonna have to pass. But would you maybe be interested in joining our team and taking down the mutant eel? As I said this, I noticed a hungry looking crocodile sneak up behind the trader. Watch out! I wasted no time and jumped into action. Using my claws, I fended off the crocodile. It was a tough battle, but in the end, I came out on top. Oh 
my gosh! You saved me! Huh? Okay, I will join your team. My llama friends are dead because of that eel. The trader now gave us better deals uh -huh. and told us his name was Joe, and we took him back to our base. I decided to expand the base to fit everyone, so I added a place for Joe to stay in and added some beds for everyone. Now this base was finally starting to feel more like a home. On days 20 through 22, I decided to go look for any clues on where my parents were being held. I set out to find the mutant Neil from my dream, but I had no idea where to start. I looked around for hours, when out of nowhere, I was attacked by a giant octopus. Its eight arms made it super tough to fight, but I was also much more confident in my abilities now. Using my claws, I was able to defeat the octopus. That was awesome! But just then, I saw an eel swim past me. I better follow it. Maybe it could lead me to its master. I followed the eel for ages, until it finally reached a massive castle right by the deep sea. I was about to take a closer look when I heard a familiar voice behind me. What did I tell you about the deep sea? You again? Have you been following me? And what is it that's so bad about it anyway? Ugh, follow me. I'll tell you all about it. The elder crab led me to his home. Please have a seat. Who is this? Je ne lui fais pas confiance. Don't mind little Pierre over there. He just gets excited with guests around. So why are you so scared of the deep sea? Kid, the deep sea is no place for our kind. Yeah, you told me already, but I've gotten a lot stronger. I bet I could take on whatever is down there. You have no idea what you're talking about. <sighs> Even if you managed to defeat the horrifying beasts that dwell in the deep, you still wouldn't be safe. At the bottom of the sea lies a monster unlike anything you've seen. It has been sleeping for centuries, but legend has it that once it wakes up from its eternal slumber, it will bring upon the end for our ocean. It must not be disturbed! Very scary! Could that be the monster that the mutant Neil is looking for? But if he finds it, that would mean... Oh no. Hmm, yes. That is concerning. Would you want to join our team? We could really use your help. Oh, ho, ho. no thank you. I'm just an old crab. You would have no use for me. Well, all right. Thanks anyway. Adieu. On days 23 through 27, I returned to my base to find it under attack by a swarm of guardians. Oh no, my friends need me. I rushed into action, fighting off the guardians, but they just kept coming and I was sure I was gonna die. But just then, my friends showed up and helped me take them on. With their help, it wasn't long until they were defeated. Phew, that was close. I noticed that the Guardians had caused some serious damage to our base, so I decided to give it an upgrade. I headed out to the overworld to gather more materials for my base. I chopped more wood and crafted tons of planks for the interior. Next, I collected a ton of sand, which I smelted into glass. Finally, I found a village where I borrowed some crops. I'll give them back one day. I headed back to my base and started building straight away. I added glass windows so we'd have a view of the ocean. After that, I built another segment to my base, adding a farm to keep us well fed. It still didn't quite feel like a home though, so I started working on the interior, adding wooden flooring as well as some furniture and chests. Wow, this is much better already. After all that building, I was starving. I collected some of the crops from my farm and built a smoker to cook them in. Now I'll never have to eat raw food again. I spent days 28 through 31 working on my statue. I like it. After that, I decided to explore the ocean, looking for any signs of my parents. I hadn't traveled far when I ran into the diver. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. They started swimming towards me, so I booked it. The diver just wouldn't let up, and finally, I found myself at the edge of the deep sea. Knowing I had no other choice, I looked down at the abyss and dropped down. It felt like hours before I finally hit the ocean floor, and it was completely dark, except a faint light that was slowly approaching me. Hey, uh, you wouldn't happen to know a way out, would you? But just then, I noticed that it was a big ugly fish coming right at me, and there were a lot more coming. I fought them off best I could, but there were just too many. Is this how it all ends? But out of nowhere, the fish around me started dying left and right. I saw figures laying each fish with skill I had never seen before. It wasn't long before all the fish were dead, and the figure approached me. Uh, I don't want any trouble. As my eyes adjusted to the dark, I suddenly recognized the creature. What did I say, kid? I told you to stay away. Hmm. Well, I suppose your parents would have wanted me to help you. Let's get you out of here. Tomorrow, I will train you. 
I thought you were old and weak. What is going on? On days 32 through 36, the elder crab took me to a mountain on the overworld to train me. First, he made me cut through different objects with my claws. We must strengthen your claws. After my training, I could cut through blocks of iron with my bare claws. Then, the elder crab made me complete an obstacle course whilst he was shooting arrows at me. Ouch! Are the arrows really necessary? No, but it definitely is more entertaining to watch. <laughs> Finally, we practiced swimming. I'm pretty sure I'm faster than you are. That might be, but Pierre over here is the fastest crustacean of the seven seas, and he really wants to beat you. I will end you, crab. We swam the entire day, and Pierre kept beating me. It was getting late, so we decided to practice one final time. I collected all my strength and gave it my all. And finally, I defeated Pierre! Incroyable! I am beaten! Just then, I felt myself getting stronger and gained six more hearts! Finally! I'm not weak anymore! After our training, the elder crab wanted to tell me something. The mutant eel has sought to rule the sea for decades, but this time he has gone too far. I want you to have this. It will aid you in your quest. The elder crab then handed me an enchanted trident. Whoa! Thank you so much! I headed back home and tested it on some drought. I was able to charge through the water like a missile. This is amazing! On days 37 through 41, I continued to work on my statue. It's really starting to come together. It looks awesome! After that, I found some underwater caverns and went looking for diamonds. It wasn't long before I found what I was looking for. Awesome! Using the diamonds, I made myself some diamond tools. While I was heading back up, I heard something from behind me. I turned around and saw a swarm of cave spiders. They immediately started attacking me. Ew! I'm glad we don't have these in the ocean. They were persistent, biting me and poisoning me. Ugh. Huh. Yeah. Using my trident, I was able to deal with the spiders, taking them all out. I made my way back to my base when I remembered the castle I saw earlier. I should investigate, but right now, I ought to check up on my friends. On days 42 through 45, I made it back to the underwater castle. Time to get sneaky. I found a crack in the castle and snuck inside. I followed a long corridor and ended up on an elevated floor. There, I saw the diver surrounded by caged sea creatures. Oh no, what are they up to? I decided to get a better look and snuck up to one of the cages. Psst. What is going on here? The diver has put us all in cages. He's using us to feed the mutant eel's army. I haven't seen the army myself, but I've heard they're almost as horrible as the mutant eel himself. I couldn't just leave them here. I had to break them out. I used my pickaxe to mine the cage, but this made a loud noise. The diver turned in my direction, so I ran as fast as I could. The castle was big, and I couldn't remember the way out. I turned a corner and came face to face with the diver. Leave me alone. The diver turned around, summoning an army of horrifying creatures. It was so tough to fight them. The army was strong, and their fangs did a lot of damage. I used my claws to hit them as much as possible, and finally, I defeated the last one. Yes! I did it! I noticed that one of the monsters had dropped a compass, but this one didn't seem to point north like it should. I wonder where it's pointing to. I decided to leave the castle before the diver returned and headed back home. On days 46 through 49, I was craving something new. I was getting tired of only eating overworld crops and decided to make an automatic kelp farm. I went looking for some redstone. I found a massive ravine with tons of redstone, which I used to craft pistons and hoppers. While I was down there, I also found more diamonds which I used to craft a full set of diamond armor. After that, I returned home and started working on the farm. I planted the kelp and added the finishing touches, completing the automatic kelp farm. Dude, this is awesome! I spent the rest of the day working on my base. I expanded my base above sea level and added an interior to it as well. Finally, I added some lights around the base to light up the area around us and keep enemies away. Ah, yeah! This place looks cool! On days 50 through 53, I could see Joe moping around the base. Hey man, what's the matter? I wish I could explore the sea with you, but I'm afraid of the water. So wet and evil. I think I know how to help. We're gonna get you swimming in no time. Yay! I decided to go back to the overworld to find something to help Joe swim. I arrived at a harbor. There's gotta be something here that can help Joe. I found a large building by the sea, but once I was inside, I spotted the mutant eel speaking to another eel. What is he doing here? I listened in on their conversation. They were discussing plans to find the deep sea beast and wake it up. Sire, we believe we've located the monster and are ready to engage. Good, very good. 
It's time for me to finally rule the ocean. The eel dropped a map for the mutants, and they went their separate ways. It's now or never. I ran for one of the swimming metal boxes, and also looted all the chests I could find. Joe is gonna be so happy! Once I finished looting the base, I followed the eel to find where they kept my parents. The eel headed into the deep sea. They must be keeping my parents there. I decided it was too risky to follow for now, but the mutant eel better be prepared. Soon, I'll take you down. With this new information, I decided to head back to my base. On days 54 through 57, I returned to find Joe pacing around the base. Here you go, Joe. Wow! What is it? It's a submarine, Joe. You can swim with us now. Yay! Awesome! We decided to go for a joyride. The submarine was perfect for Joe. He zoomed through the ocean with the grace of a dolphin. We swam around, looking for more food. Eventually, we found some cod, taking them out for our next meal. After finishing up, we noticed an ocean monument in the distance. It was massive! We swam towards it to check it out. Maybe we can find some more information about the mutant eel here. We found a chest with a lock on it. I wonder what could be in there. Guess we'll have to find a key. Suddenly, an elder guardian appeared behind us. Uh-oh. Sorry for breaking into your home. Pathetic crab. Do you really think you can defeat the mutant eel? You're also with him? Well then bring it on! The Elder Guardian attacked us, and he was really strong. But working together with Joe, I knew we could take him. Take this, you spike ball! Using the power of my trident, I dealt some serious damage. After a fierce fight, the Elder Guardian finally died. We did it! As it died, the Elder Guardian dropped a key. That must be the key to the chest! We used the key on the chest, and it fit perfectly. Inside the chest, I found a set of Hydroblade armor. I put it on, and the armor let me regenerate health while underwater, and even gave me an increased resistance while underwater. I feel unstoppable! On days 58 through 61, I began building another segment to my base. It was definitely time to give Marlin his very own room. I still felt like building some more, so I decided to continue working on my statue. I started working on the claws, making them massive. The mutant eel will be scared stiff when he sees this. After that, I headed over to a nearby Mesa Plateau to gather more materials for my statue. But when I arrived, I was surrounded by eels. Uh-oh, this can't be good. They started attacking me, knocking me back. I tried fighting back, but there were too many. They kept hitting me and finally knocked me into a cage. Let me out! Just then, the mutant eel appeared. Hello, crab. You've grown stronger since I last saw you. That's right, and I'm gonna take you down. With the power of the sea monster, nothing will stop me from ruling the sea. But I can't let you get in my way. I must kill you now! Just as he was about to strike, Marlin came out of nowhere and knocked him over. Let's get out of here, bro! We got out of there as fast as possible and made it back home. That was too close. Thanks for having my back, Marlin. After a long day, we decided to rest for the night. I woke up on day 62 through 65, feeling bad that I still hadn't rescued my parents. I decided I needed to do something about it. I have to become stronger and kill that mutant eel. Before heading out, I decided to work on my base. It still feels a bit empty. I decorated the areas around my base, adding more life to it. Once I was finished, I returned back to the Elder Crab. If anyone could help me become stronger, it was him. Sir, the mutant eel is so close to waking that monster up. If we don't do something, the mutant will destroy the ocean. Hmm, yes. After our last conversation, I remembered something from a long time ago. This horn is said to calm the monster. I want you to take it. Hopefully, you won't have to use it. Thanks so much! After our conversation, we did some more intense training. I worked on perfecting my trident handling. I'm getting better at this! Feeling stronger than before, I felt confident I could take on the mutant eel, so I decided to return home. I'm so close to saving my parents from that evil mutant eel. On days 66 through 68, I decided I had to return to the underwater castle to confront the mutant eel. I was about to leave when I was stopped by Marlin. Hey man, so my turtle bros ran into this massive squid the other day and got hurt pretty badly. I need your help to save them. I was about to go confront the mutant eel though. Please, dude! I don't know if they'll survive much longer. All right, you can count on me. Marlin and I left, and he showed me the way to his friends. When we arrived, we discovered a massive ravine with a colossal squid swimming around. Ugh, squids are the worst. We swam into the ravine where the squid had captured the other turtles. Prepare to die, you slimy freak. We began to battle, but the squid was way stronger than I thought. I needed to do my very best if I wanted to win this fight. I used my new trident skills to distract the squid while Marlin swam to his friends 
friends. After a long fight, I finally took the squid down, saving Marlin's friends. The turtles thanked us, saying they thought they were dead meat. Anytime, it's what I do. Marlin said goodbye to his friends, and we returned back home to sleep for the night. I woke up on days 69 through 71 and decided it was time to work on my statue. I went out to collect more materials in the overworld, when suddenly I was surrounded by a group of pillagers. You guys don't look very nice. The pillagers started firing arrows at me, and I had to fight back. I wasn't used to fighting on land, so this was a tough battle. It took me a while, but I eventually managed to kill the final pillager. Phew. Now back to gathering materials. I collected the last blocks and headed back home. I wanted to make sure the statue was as detailed as possible, so I made sure to use a wide range of blocks. There's still some work to do in order to make it perfect. Once I finished building, I was starving. I used my automatic kelp farm to gather some kelp, and then cooked it in my smoker. Once I finished eating, I heard a loud bang coming from outside. I went to check out what it was, and found Marlin severely wounded with the divers standing over him. No! Don't you dare touch him! I rushed over to the diver, hitting him as hard as I possibly could. But I still wasn't strong enough. The diver didn't even seem hurt. Instead, they turned around and swam away, leaving me with Marlin. That must have been a warning. I will make them pay for what they did. Marlin had tried to protect us, but the diver was just too strong. I... I don't feel too good, dude. Don't worry, buddy. Let's get you back to safety. On days 72 through 77, I decided to follow the compass I had found earlier. I bet it'll take me to the mutant eel. The compass led me straight to the deep sea, and this time, I felt strong enough to go down there. I descended into the dark abyss, and finally hit the ocean floor, and started exploring. It was so dark, and I saw tons of creatures I had never seen before. On my journey, I was approached by a group of anglerfish that dropped rare materials when I fought them. Ha! These creatures stand no chance against me. I took down the final anglerfish and continued following the compass. The compass led me deeper into the ocean, and finally, I found what the compass was pointing to. It was a monster bigger than anything I had ever seen. Whoa, this must be the sea monster. I better be quiet. But just then, I noticed a faint light approaching. It was the diver. Hello, crab. It's time for you to die. I had had enough. It was time to get revenge. This is for my parents. We started fighting, and I could tell that my attacks actually seemed to hurt them this time. But the diver was strong, and they had a trident with loyalty that dealt some serious damage. I will wake the monster and watch as it destroys your home. No, you will die tonight. The diver used a powerful chakram attack, which hurt a lot. Luckily, my hydroplate armor helped me take less damage. After a long battle, I finally made the killing blow on that evil diver. Yes, that's what you get. Thankfully, the monster was still in a deep sleep, so I decided to quietly leave it alone. On day 78 through 80, I continued exploring the deep sea. After a bit of traveling, I was attacked by a megalodon who seemed to be guarding these lands. Now that's a big shark! It was massive and packed a serious punch. I used my trident and my diamond sword to do as much damage as possible. We battled for what felt like hours, but eventually, I was able to get the upper hand and took it out. If I can beat a megalodon, I definitely stand a chance against the mutant eel. After some good progress, I decided it was time to go home. I returned to find Marlin in a really bad state. He was barely conscious and couldn't even talk. This is bad. I have to get you help. On days 81 through 84, I decided to finish off my base. I worked on finalizing my base, making it the most epic beach base ever. I added the last touches, finishing off my base, looking awesome. After that, I decided I had to look for help to save Marlin. I realized that my only hope was to ask the humans for help, so I made it back to the harbor with Marlin on a lead and went looking for anyone who could help. As I continued to search for help, I ran into a human who seemed to take pity on Marlin. Hello, human. My friend is very hurt. Could you help him? You poor thing! I'll see what I can do! The human took us back to his house and took care of Marlin. In the meantime, I decided to explore his house. I saw old paintings and plants. I walked into another room and was shocked at what I saw. It was the diver suit! But I thought I killed the diver! Oh no! Marlin! I ran back to Marlin as fast as I could and confronted the human. Oh, you found my suit. I used to be really into scuba diving. <laughs> so you're not working with the mutineal? Absolutely not. 
Also, it looks like your friend is already feeling better. I felt so bad for confronting the human, but I was happy that Marlin was healthy again. We thanked the human and returned back home to rest for the night. On days 85 through 89, I continued to scour the deep sea, looking for my parents. I searched for a long time, until I found myself in a completely new biome. I've never seen anything like this before. I continued searching until I found a big cave and decided to check it out. It was dark, but I could just barely make out a large creature swimming towards me. It was a massive fish, just like the creatures from the mutant eel's army. Why does everything here want to kill me? I used my claws to fight against the fish. Come here, you big ugly. It was so strong, and I was getting low on health. It was an intense fight, and I was barely able to come out on top. I was able to kill it, but I was hurt pretty badly. How can I defeat the mutiny like this? I am not strong enough. I sat down in defeat when I heard a voice. Psst, over here. Pierre, what are you doing here? You want to be strong? Suivez-moi. Uh, you want me to follow you? Okay. Pierre led me deeper into the cave, where I saw a glowing orb. Touch. I listened to Pierre and touched the orb. Suddenly, I felt a surge of power flow through me, and I now had 20 hearts and looked stronger than ever. Whoa, this is incredible. How did you know about this, Pierre? How you think I became fastest swimmer? Oh, I beat you though. Oh, I let you win. Yeah, right. On days 90 through 94, I made my way back home when I came across a group of sea vipers. They started attacking me, but it wasn't even a challenge. Using my new strength, I obliterated them all. Wow, I'm awesome. But just then, I heard a loud bang. I swam towards the sound and saw that it was the mutant eel waking up the sea monster. No! It is too late, crab. I have succeeded. There is nothing you can do now. The monster rose from its sleep and roared. It's not too late. I will stop you. The sea monster swam away, destroying everything in its path. What have you done? On days 95 through 98, I swam around the ocean, which was now completely destroyed by the monster. I have to stop its rage. I finally made it home, and to my relief, my base was still intact. I decided now was a good time to finish off my statue. I added the final touches, giving it a crown and adding some more detail, finishing off my statue. Hopefully, this gives everyone the hope they need. After that, Marlin came up to me. Hey, dude, glad to have you back. While you were away, I did some exploring of my own, and I think I know where they're holding your parents. Marlin showed me to a massive crater in the deep sea, so that's where they are. We decided to set up camp for the night, and rest up before rescuing them. On D99, it was time to save my parents. I swam into the crater, and found my parents along with a bunch of other sea creatures in a cage. Mom! Dad! I'm here to save you! I used my claws to break through the bars, and finally rescue my parents. You're finally free! Sorry it took so long. I've missed you so much. I brought my parents back to my base and prepared myself to fight the monster. Before I left, I decided to give my friends and family one last speech. Attention everyone. I will leave to kill the monster that's been terrorizing the ocean once and for all. It'll be a dangerous mission and this might be the last time you see me. So before I leave, I need you all to make sure you've liked the video, subscribed to the channel, and turned on notifications so you never miss a video. Radical, dude! Yay! I can't wait for the next video! I left my base and confronted the sea monster. It was absolutely massive, but I was prepared. You might be big, but I'm fighting for a cause. This was a hard battle, and the monster used its massive fins to deal devastating damage. I realized that I just didn't stand a chance. This was a legendary creature for a reason. Nothing could stop it. Uh, I won't give up! The monster knocked me into the ground, leaving me with just half a heart. I guess this is it. But just then, I remembered the horn that the elder crab had given me. I took it out and blew a soft tune, and it seemed to be working. The monster stopped attacking me and seemed much friendlier than before. Hey, buddy, it's okay. I'm not your enemy. The monster peacefully swam off into the distance, and I headed off, ready to confront the mutant eel. I made it to the mutant eel's castle on day 100, where I knew he would be hiding. Finally, it's time to end your reign. I walked into the castle to see him towering over me. It's over. You've lost. You may have calmed the monster, 
but I still rule the ocean. I just need to kill you first. No way! I won't let that happen. You've already hurt enough people. <laughs> you might be bigger now, but you're still the same little crab you were back when I sent the diver to destroy your home and take your family. It's time I finished the job and killed you for good. Before I knew it, he came at me with full power. He was so fast. Is that all you got? You haven't seen anything yet. The mutant eel splashed a potion on himself and grew absolutely massive. It's time for you to die. The mutant eel spawned in a swarm of anglerfish to overpower me. Ugh, this is too much. Eventually, I was able to take out all the anglerfish. Once again, the mutant eel and I were head to head, fighting to death. The mutant eel was stronger than ever, but I was able to evade all of his attacks and deal one final blow, finishing off the mutant eel and his reign of terror. Subscribe to Silliocraft!